to get to the point where you know how to pitch yourself. We went through the whole uh, details of publishing, of uh, what's easy to sell, what is not easy to sell abroad. Why do I want to be sold abroad? I mean, I should, uh, uh, I could be publishing in my own country and be very happy. But no, I want to be published somewhere else. So we went through all these details, how to use social media and how to uh, approach uh, editors. We talked about translation and now we're at the, big, the most interesting part is how to pitch ourselves. Um, this is interesting not only because it's, it's a learning process. I mean, some people are good at it naturally, some people have to learn. It's a strategy you learn and it, and it stays with you. So, there's nothing to be scared of. And basically we divided the groups in, uh, I think there's five? Five groups. Five groups. Uh, there's a <coughs> spokesperson for each group and they're going to do a pitch of either a book that one of them has published, but we don't want to know the samples, or something they made up, something uh, which is uh, imaginary. <coughs> Just a little bit background information. This is being done, um, being held by the Mohawk Foundation in cooperation with the Rip Institute of, of Jakarta for the purpose of preparing authors for the Frankfurt Book Fair in 2015. Who knows who's going to be selected to go? Who knows whose books are going to be translated? But um, everybody needs to be prepared. And I can just add, I'm a profession, by profession I'm a literary translator, and I'm also a scout for publishers and agencies, and I'm occasionally an editor. Okay, Joya, where are we right now? Are we at a bar? Are we at a... <laughs> We're in a very... Uh, it's, it's a festival, it's a literary festival, it's packed with people. I'm a literary agent and I, I meet people. I'm, I go around and just casually, you know, uh, talk to people, but I don't have much time because I'm a busy person. I have 300 emails every day, like agents and editors. And so I want to know who are the best writers, local writers, say I'm here for a festival and somebody like you come and approach me and have three minutes. <laughs> yes, I ran into this young woman um, earlier and I, you know, I'd like to hear about what, uh, who you are and what you're doing. Yeah. Well, I'm Lana Sati, I'm a private English teacher who will be doing writing and I'm also a storyteller for my children. So every night before they sleep, I tell them the story of my childhood and that's uh, inspired me to be like this novel. Where are you from? I'm from Bolivia. Uh, are you published? Thank have you, you, been, have you been published? Yes. And um, you know, why, 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 why do you want us to publish? Um, so first of all, I would like to tell you that this about the book. It's a life journey based on the true story of a Taiwanese woman. It's a beautiful triangle story between a cousin, a Chinese Indonesian, Scar, the girl in the book, the mimosa, and then Jonathan, the Dutchman, set on a minority footage nearby Borobudur Temple. Love, loyalty, and loss went into the cycle of life based on the Javanese philosophy of song called Machopai. And why would you think that this story would be interesting for uh, Italian publishers, let's say? Um, because in this book there is a local wisdom uh, had a deep meaning about why we do, how we do this life, so it might be interesting for other countries to see how the Javanese uh, super What year is it set in? Um, <coughs> starting from the 1970 until 1970? Until now? Until now. Historical. Yeah, well, we know what we're doing. Yeah. 
Oh, you have one more minute. You have one more minute to sell yourself. One more minute. One more minute. So I want to share one, one of the songs. Oh, yeah. It's a beautiful song of this girl of Daisy and her stay living in my life. It's in Germanese. Hips 
uh, mm. habits. People really love to have really have pay attention on the. Oh, but how about the international audience? Oh, they will love it because it's. <laughs> <laughs> Galliano is wearing the uh, very oh, yeah. hiccup now. <laughs> he can, he, yes, yes. <laughs> and they have to know how to make it. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we have a great title coming up, Midnight Call. Uh, <laughs> we want to find out what the <laughs> Joy, I was going through that festival I met this young woman from Indonesia and um, I, I really want to be introduced. Hi, hi. Um, so, uh, my name is Alisa. Hatati <laughs> <laughs> um, I write uh, thriller. Mm -hmm. uh, not to brag, but my last novel was prepared by um, the Chronicles compared to Raymond Chandler. So, did you know that late at night, many Indonesians call the various companies' toll-free customer service number to complain about their personal problems? So he accepted this graveyard ship as the mm -hmm. uh, customer service mm -hmm. representative. So he, so night after night, he just takes these calls from like people who feel alienated and desperate and just calling to him, um, talking about uh, their personal problems. And he even got some people who use that line as a cold sex line. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> 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 so it's I want to know more. So, so see, in, in this book, I try to give. You give this um, diverse view of the country because calls are coming from all over the country, but also very intimate because they talk about themselves in very you know, private things. So, what holds this book together? Well, the the, the operator. There's this one particular uh, caller, a woman who's in an abusive marriage. Then he he really takes uh, sympathy to her, and then he begins to um, he sort of be becomes her um, stalker slash guardian angel. So he tries not to interfere in her life, but he, but he you know, would um, somehow make it safer for her. And in the end, he actually goes and spoiler alert, kill her. No. <laughs> yeah, so the book opens with this like, so who, who, who killed this man? The police are confused because it looks like an insider job, because like the murderer really knows everything about the family. but. Like nobody in the family could be a suspect. Sounds like a good film. Sounds like it. Yes. Yes. And it's very, very contemporary. Yes. yes. Yeah. Please send us a few questions. <laughs> <laughs> Jogja is the cradle of our Indonesian culture. 
it's so rich with cultural things, even the life, and it's also a little bit complicated. Our hero is Pak Mar Tono, Mar Tono Choyo Wilsoni. <laughs> He was this, more than you. <laughs> he is actually an Abdi Dalim. meaning uh, that is almost like uh, a civil servant that is special for for so for the Rata for the palace. Mm -hmm. And to to have that kind of status is all, almost like a very high respective level of status in. In the life of Chukcha people. You will have to uh, speak a little bit faster because uh, we've got another point. Yes. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to know. I oh. want to know. <laughs> we, we, we will send, send you our, our email. <laughs> I want to know now. That's not the way. Marto. 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 Yes, they are Fidalam in the Palace. But they are actually very lowly paid. And uh, they are almost like only paid once in a year in a very little amount of money. But they are proud people. So in a day, a day, day time, they have to work hard for, for their living. And this Pakmantono has to work as a pitcher driver. So this is slave trade book. Mm. <laughs> this is about slave trade. <laughs> no, no. It's about the conflict inside the man, about how physical conflict and emotional conflict. So also philosophical? It's very philosophical, but humoristic also. Good. Humoristic. <laughs> 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 because philosophical books is like... Uh, okay, yeah, not philosophical. <laughs> During the time, he has to, to tell <laughs> his children to be a uh, real in uh, Japanese people, a uh, man. Japanese men always get very subdued, very yes, yes, very <laughs> <laughs> submissive. Yeah. Yeah. You got the word? Submissive. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not. <laughs> well, I don't love you anymore. <laughs> Sounds fascinating, philosophy, mm -hmm. trade, all sorts. Of, but why would Italian or French people would be interested? It's full of insight. Such, Such as. Such as. Give us one. Such as the way the Japanese people tell their children. Such as the way he moved around the palace. Slowly. Slowly. Wisdom. 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 And like he has to, you, you cannot walk in the, in the place, he has to like mankind. Yeah, crawl, 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 crawl. 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 That's wisdom now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And but that is when he is outside, he told them to the children and there's a conflict between them. I think a PD Atlas this would be yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we have a, a really exciting book coming up. There is a Komodo dragon in my backyard. <laughs> But my book is not about the cow and their milk productivity. <laughs> it's a hard sell. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, it's about a more exotic animal. It's the Komodo dragon. So the title is, uh, there is a Komodo dragon in my backyard. The target market is for children 6 to 12 years. Mm -hmm. uh, the format is illustrated uh, chapter book, so mm -hmm. it's a bridge between the picture book and the mm -hmm. novel. And the summary, it started with a boy named Damar, he's eight, and he was following his mother to this forest, to this small village, because his mother was a veterinarian. Mm -hmm. And so he missed the city. He didn't have anybody there, he didn't know anybody. And so he went on this adventure. He went to uh, the forest and looking at all the animals, and one day he found a stone. 
And the stone was among all the souvenirs that he brought back to the city mm -hmm. when the mother ended the assignment. And but the stone was not a stone because the next day it cracked. And then when he went to the to the backyard, he found the most exotic pet is the Komodo dragon. <laughs> but the pet of course gave him lots of trouble like it and his homework and the mother's laundry and finished everything in the refrigerator and scared the, the neighbors. But it made him famous because you know all the others were like walking the dog and he was like walking <laughs> the Komodo <laughs> dragon. <laughs> and he also got an A in the show and tell at school because he brought the pet. Yeah, and, but after that the pet got sick and he didn't want to eat and the mom said, oh well, he is the environment and his family so they have to bring him back to Flores to return him. And, but when Damar went back to Flores to send the, the pet, he met uh, another boy and so even though he had to hug with the dragon, the, dra uh, the dragon stayed forever in his heart and the new friend became his best friend. I like that story. Yeah. Where did, how good did the illustrations? Now, I was about to talk about it. <laughs> this will uh, be good in uh, foreign countries because first, all children love dragon. Yes. They will be so thrilled if they learn that there is a real life dragon in this exotic faraway country in Indonesia. I don't do I don't do <laughs> okay. And then uh, we can showcase the, all the exotic, the exotic place in Indonesia and also through the illustration we can put like the the known pattern mm -hmm. that's from Flores. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And so um, this is only the first book in the series. The next book in the series is there is an orangutan in my closet. I think I'll send you the PDF. Sure, sure. Okay, good. Then I'll be waiting for the contract. <laughs> which was 
minimum two to three pages for each writer. Now you have a version which is only one page, which because it's better to keep it short. So they ask me minimum three to four writers to pitch to them. So I uh, wrote, and of course they, they sent me examples, but they said these are too long, so make it shorter because we have attention problems, you know. They, they, they admit it, I mean, it's the easiest way. So basically I sent a report to three people, um, one from South Africa, one from India, but she, she's in London, and the other is an Italian friend uh, and writer who writes in English, so they wanted something in English. So basically I had a very short biography, a very short synopsis why this book is interesting, that would be like three lines. And which kind of readership, because that's, that's why it's important for you to know, because it's something that we are asked to write. You know, uh, do you think it would be adults or uh, uh, people, I mean, internationally easy to sell? Or maybe some areas in the world relate more because the story, I don't know, is set in uh, Mexico, so, yeah, you know. I mean, Elisa said something, I mean, she said, I've been compared to the Ring, Ring of Chapter yeah. in Indonesia. Yeah. That, that is something that it drives me crazy, but it's, oh, yes. the foreign publishers always want to know, what's she like, or what's he like? And this question <laughs> was asked, uh, it was hilarious, when Tash Tao was at Henan Festival, and so somebody asked, who can you compare yourself? And he said, Tolstoy? <laughs> <laughs> and then of course he's the most, he's a, he's a very humble guy. So, of course everybody just started laughing. So basically I gave this report with three people. Um, and then of course the attachments were one chapter of their novel for each. A longer synopsis in case in case they're interested they want to read more but that one page is kind of the, the catchy catchy line um, and it worked because I mean it's not my best example and I could have more but just those two were the easiest I have others that I would send to publishers not agents but they were all in Italian so I would have to translate them and, and it was kind of complicated but these, these two are kind of decent examples of uh, me, a scout or a translator. You can meet me at all sorts of literary festivals. You have a chat with me. And I send this report to the Pontas, for instance. And it worked because basically these two people signed with the Pontas, the agency. And they're working together, not only, I mean, most good agents are very good editors. So the editing part, of course, you should give a perfect product, you know, something that is, or, you know, or something that can be uh, read and appreciated in, in the most perfect form you can give. Also, you can send, if you have short stories that they're already published and readable in English, or that's translation again problem, um, if you wrote only short stories, you're now on your novel, that's more interesting for publisher because this is something we haven't mentioned. If you write short stories, it's fantastic. I love short stories. Everybody loves Munro. And short stories should be, you know, a form of writing that is sold easily, but it's not. I mean, that's historically been difficult to sell short stories. Um, why? Because publishers I mean, the readers, readers like fiction, a uh, percentage of readers love short stories, but they're more difficult to sell. So the publisher would ask me, I, I could never go to a publisher and say, hey, there is this Janice Pariat, which is in the reports that we, we will send you. Janice Pariat, she wrote this beautiful collection of short stories set in Assam, India. If I went to a publisher saying, I have this fantastic writer, what did she write? Short stories. Mm -hmm. Let's wait for the novel. Mm. Okay, so now she's writing the novel, but she wants to find an agent. And she's working with Marina, Pont uh, Marina Penalva, which works for Pontas, and Marina happens to be an excellent editor. So basically Janice had her novel in mind, she's written 10 chapters, I think, 
talking to Marina, she changed the, the first chapter completely. You would because I saw all the phases. You would have recognized that that first chapter was not discarded; it just it was put in some some other parts of the book. So uh, these are two examples. I mean, they're not the Bible. It's just a good idea on how to. Yeah. So after this uh, meeting is over, we, we will send you, hmm. um, so if, if Joy doesn't mind, we will send you samples of what the, what kind of thing the agent would write about you, yeah. would write yeah. about you. Yeah. We will also send you, um, we're trying to build up a community here, so hmm. we're, we'll send you the emails of everybody, if, you know, if that's all right. We'll also send you a mini survey about this session. Mm -hmm. We would of like course. to find out if it was worth it at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
if, if you can write something in Compass, write something in, uh, in your newsletter, write something in any publication you can, that a Fan for 2015 is coming up, it's mm -hmm. a great occasion for Indonesia for Indonesian writers to be on the global stage, and we have to start now. Translating. <laughs> yes. And to, tonight you have a book lounge at, at Goethe Institute with um, some very VIP VIPs, and uh, of course I will I will tell them that we had this wonderful workshop today. And uh, please, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Rackman, which is uh, Deputy Minister, um, do something. Go ahead. So if I can take this message with me, then that was really very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. John, who is the Lontar Foundation, and also is putting me up, Crystal, Goethe, and Nadine, and uh, thank you all, because I want to meet you. So, I might be here next year again, because I'm in Asia, so I might spend, I want to spend more time here, I want to know more, and through your books, for me, it's easier than, you know, you know, reading an encyclopedia, for me, it's more interesting. <laughs> so, through you, I will get to know your country, if you allow me, but thank you.